Many reviews have crowned Framer the future of website building, but is this really the case? In this Framer tutorial and review, I'll explore what the provider offers and if it really deserves all that praise. All right, first things first, what is Framer exactly? In short, it's a UX-oriented website builder integrated with AI. I know, I know, AI has gained so much traction in the past two years that it's become a buzzword. And previously, from a website building perspective, pages generated with AI felt lackluster, to put it mildly. So. We'll see how Framer's AI performs in this department. What makes Framer unique is that the provider focuses on minute visual details and your website's general aesthetic, giving you the tools required to adjust almost everything you want. That's not necessarily the case with other website builders whose arsenal of visual settings can be limited. To start using Framer, you'll need a subscription. I recommend getting the basic subscription as the mini is severely limited. Yeah, it's pricier, but it gives you way more freedom and functionality on the platform. To get the subscription and start using Framer today, scan the QR code on screen or click on the link in the description. Registering on the Framer website is very easy as it should be. All you need to do is fill in your email address and an activation letter will be sent to your inbox. Then you'll be able to access your account and create a password. Or alternatively, you can simply log in with your Google account and use that instead, which is what I did. After that was done, I was met with a clean user interface. However, this soon changed after clicking on new project, which took me to a blank canvas packed with settings on both sides of the screen. So let's see what Framer has for us. Right off the bat, Framer offers over 1,500 templates, of which almost 400 are free. That's a lot to browse, so there's a very good chance you'll find what fits your needs. For my taste, more templates could be free, but to be fair, even the paid ones won't break the bank as they're pretty affordable. And what's also nice is that if you do see a cool detail on a template but don't want to use it in full, you can copy elements from that template and use them on your project anyway. But let me show you some of my favorite templates. Framer did a really good job here. These look really impressive and professional. Framer's a clear standout among its peers in the market. However, if you don't want to use a template, you can use Framer AI to build a website based on your prompt. To do this, I navigated to Settings on the left side menu, clicked File, then press Generate, and input my vision for the website in the prompt area. Afterward, Framer will take some time to generate your website, but after it's loaded, you'll see the result in three different layouts one for PC, the second for tablets, and the third for mobile. Seeing how the website would look on all commonly used devices is convenient, a huge quality of life bonus. So kudos to Framer on that front. What's also great is that you can tweak a particular site element by clicking the sparkly looking button outside of it. The font and color will also be changed for that specific area in all three layouts to maintain consistency. And if you still don't like the result, you can regenerate the website until you like what you see. If you wanna add more pages, click on the little insert icon on the left side. You'll be met with a new canvas where you're free to choose templates, import blog articles, and more. I personally tested quite a few prompts on Framer, trying to execute different ideas, and honestly, the results varied. Some performed better than others, but it's important to note that how well you prompt the AI is another topic entirely, since the outcome largely depends on how precisely your needs are phrased. That said, even if I was very detailed in my requests, there were instances where Framer failed to fulfill the main idea of my prompt. Overall, the potential potential for Framer's AI is there, and it can still get the job done for simplistic ideas. However, it still needs polishing and training to be on par with the other templates Framer already offers. Moreover, Framer not only generates the website's design, but also creates text that can be tweaked or rewritten using their AI rewrite tool. However, the AI rewrites the content without asking for any ideas. It assumes what would sound better and just changes the text to that. Compared to other industry leaders, this part feels more like a gimmick than an actual AI tool for text. For example, Hostinger uses AI to regenerate text tailored to your wishes. In my opinion, this is an area for improvement for Framer. Aside from the AI, you can tweak many other settings to improve the result. It doesn't matter if you use AI or templates. For example, if you don't like the background color and want to switch to a specific different one, open the settings on the right side menu and select whichever looks better to you. Adding custom visual details or text is not complicated either. To add a picture, I navigate to settings on the left side menu, click file again, and then click upload an image. Or if I want to add a different type of media, for instance, Spotify audio, I click Click Insert, hover on Media, then drag and drop the Spotify icon onto the canvas and place it where I want. Now, if you want to experiment with advanced settings, Framer's effects are an engaging choice. In fact, 
No other website builder makes it so easy to create an animated site that looks clean and professional. So learning to use the effect is definitely worth it. You can add interactive components or effects to text, as well as UI scrolling interface animations and much more. To start using effects, select the element you want to customize and a menu on the right side of the screen will appear. Then expand the effects section and you'll have multiple settings to choose from. Safe to say, Framer is easy to customize and there is a learning curve for sure. Moreover, Framer has a built-in content management system. You can create or import existing content into your project. But to be fair, Framer's CMS and other advanced settings would require a separate video. So let's stick to the basics for now. Okay, enough messing with the settings in this Framer's guide. It's time for my website to go live. To do this, I click the publish button in the top right corner of the screen. Then a new field appears where I can create a custom domain name and host it on Framer locally or choose to connect a domain. So what do my results look like after playing around with Framer's AI and other settings? Honestly, at least in my opinion, the page I created looks decent on all three operating systems. And the good part is that even first time website builders could recreate something like this with Framer. I suggest giving the AI a spin too, because you can definitely find success with it. However, at the end of the day, Framer's templates are just too good for them not to be used. Just look at this template and how good it looks, man. Lastly, Framer really shines in the customization capabilities of the builder. I could easily tweak it and change my website to my needs. Add a bit of custom media here, move the text there, delete this, add that, and suddenly your website starts looking really good. And the best part for beginners, you don't need to spend much time learning everything from scratch thanks to Framer's website builder doing the heavy lifting for you. To summarize this Framer tutorial, it's a beginner-friendly AI-integrated website builder with an intuitive drag-and-drop interface and built-in content management system. There are many features for advanced users too, so I can easily recommend Framer for both beginners and intermediate users. If you have any other questions about the provider, let's have a chat in the comments. I'm leaving another video on screen you might be interested in too, as well as a link for Framer subscription. See you in the next video.